Hey, fan, hold on tight because I've got some scorching news just in, hot off the press, that's going to shake up the world of the New York Jets, and I'm here to give you the scoop firsthand. Brace yourself for the excitement, fan, and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't waste any time. Stay up to date with all the latest news about our beloved team. Jets fan, brace yourselves for this bombshell. It's time to gear up for the wildest draft we've ever seen. With free agency almost wrapped up, the anticipation is through the roof for the 2024 NFL Draft in Detroit from April 25th to 27th, and the excitement keeps building with each passing day. Joe Douglas, our general manager, and his team have already addressed several crucial needs in free agency. We've brought in veterans for the offensive line like Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses, and John Simpson. A potential game-changer in the passing game like Mike Williams, along with reinforcements on the defensive line like Lecky Fotu and Javon Kinlaw, and also at cornerback with Isaiah Oliver. Not to mention the arrival of backup quarterback Tyra Taylor. But wait, there's more. We've bolstered our team by re-signing a host of our free agents, such as kicker Greg Zuerlein, punter Thomas Morstead, safety Chuck Clark, defensive lineman Solomon Thomas, and tight end Kenny Yeboa. And after losing edge rusher Bryce Huff to the Eagles in free agency, Douglas acted quickly and brought in Hasten Reddick, also from the Eagles. Now, onto the fun of the draft, it seems like there's a new mock draft every day. And despite all the moves we've already made, the Jets, with the 10th overall pick, still have needs and options on the table. In a situation where the roster is on paper and the holes have been filled, we can say that this will be an unpredictable draft, with so many possible paths to follow with the 10th pick, said Ledger Dowsable, a CBS sports analyst. On this week's The Official Jets podcast, we could trade down and pick a wide receiver, Dowsable said. Bowers is a bit high for me at the 10th pick. I like our group of tight ends. It's a good, deep group. We could opt for a wide receiver or trade down and get a wide receiver and an offensive tackle in the first and second rounds if we decide to trade. Dowsable, who was a defensive end in the NFL and played for five teams from 2009 to 2017, including three seasons with the Jets, firmly believes in building through the draft with depth and recognizes the value of players often picked in the middle and late rounds like offensive lineman Carter Warren and Max Mitchell, cornerback Michael Carter, and defensive lineman Michael Clemens. So many players sign one-year deals, and some have significant injury histories, he said. You need longevity and consistency, players who can develop while others potentially move on. Guys need to be foundational pieces who can grow together. Like most draft observers, Dowsable sees the Jets' needs at three positions, wide receiver, offensive line, and safety, and perhaps another developmental quarterback. Safety is one of the most urgent positions, if not the most. Dowsable said. I like the signing of Chuck Clark, who was injured last year with an ACL injury during training. Aston Davis hasn't resigned yet, and there are big names available. Joe Douglas is letting the market come to the Jets. He did the same with Smith and Williams. There's a middle class. I could see a guy like Cole Bishop from Utah with the Jets in the third round. He's good in the box. It also gives you the ability to match up with tight ends one-on-one -on -one and can play in the middle of the field. Aston Davis will improve or do we sign someone like free agent Quandre Diggs? I also think a developmental offensive tackle is needed, but not as big as everyone says. You can pick someone in the third, fourth, or fifth round. You got Max in the fourth round in 2002 and Warren in the fourth round last year. Max wasn't supposed to play in his first year. Same with Warren. We hope they continue to develop, start playing occasionally, and eventually become starters. I liked how Joe D addressed depth. We still have Jake, Hanson, and Wes Schweitzer, but we need one more piece. I don't think it's good to pick an O-tackle at the 10th pick. You signed Williams for a year, and you still need a playmaker. In his view since the first week of April, assuming the Jets keep the 10th overall pick, Dowsable likes the idea of choosing Washington wide receiver Rome O'Dunn's 6-3, 215. O'Dunn's played inside and outside, he said, catching passes from my favorite QB in the draft, Michael Penix. Williams could hit the free agent market, and if you pick him, O'Dunn's, you have someone ready to step in if he leaves. Not only do you get a compensatory pick for him, Williams, you have someone to play for years. You look at the root repertoire and where he came from, he can play inside, outside. Can move around, which also frees up Garrett Wilson to play inside. It makes sense to pick him, another good playmaker you need on offense for the quarterback to pass to. Few would deny that there's a bit of alchemy and a lot of uncertainty involved in the NFL draft every year. The draft is all about potential and projection, Dowsable said.
Teams sometimes get into trouble thinking they can outsmart other teams on what a guy can be, rather than really looking at the tape and seeing what a guy is and what his ceiling is. It's hard to pick a guy in the top five when you haven't seen him do it on tape. You need to be able to build through the draft for the franchise's longevity. So, fan, that's it. Don't miss a moment of this exciting journey toward the draft and the upcoming season. Sign up now to receive all the updates firsthand, and let's support our team together until victory. Go Jets!